exemption. They just they come out and they just they give you the exemption. You submit the plans yes. because you took down dwellings and plans. And a lot of times, the Washington County Sewage Council that's you apply for that with them because I can't I don't have all of that with me tonight. Do not have it because you submitted. I took the whole packet to the Washington County Sewage Council. I'm responsible for maintaining it. And why can't you subdivide 10 acres off for this new structure? Oh, uh, because if I do that, then I got the trailer porch, I'd have to put in a um, trailer plant. Why? I don't, I don't understand I why. We can submit something for you and from DEP saying that and from the township engineer, I mean, Dan talked to DEP, I talked to DEP, because trust me, Mr. Romantic would rather have subdivided it and been done with it because it would have been a lot easier. I mean, his daughter's discretion is nowhere to live. They put all this money into this home. So if that, if it was as easy enough to subdivide it, he would have subdivided We had to put the proposal from the survey engineer was $2,500. It was who the township recommended to use. Uh, we hit the roadblock when DEP said that's fine, her house would be fine. She could function because the septic system was already in there. They said because the other homes, they would create each one of those because the sewage guideline is 300, and you might be able to know this, 350 gallons per day. They're saying what they would treat each one of those mobile homes as a home. So you're looking at six homes, and they would not allow six homes on one and each of them having their own, they would create, you would have to put all six of them, because one parcel, you have to put all six of them on the same treatment facility. So you'd have to build a small package plant, which would be like thirty some thousand or fifty thousand oh, dollars. You're saying no, okay. <laughs> well that I mean it, so we'd be standing here, I mean he can't afford that. And then what would happen there is, you know, the people that live up in those homes would have to, to leave. I mean, they wouldn't be able to stay there because Mr. Robin can't go down that path. If there is any other alternative, he would consider it. I mean, his daughter would like to move back into her home. She lived in that home. He bought it. It was an unfortunate situation that the mobile home slid, and I mean, it was unstable. And you have the map there with his um, topography of the, the his whole parcel, and I, I'm sure a lot of you have driven past there. I mean, the property slipped down. So it really was impossible for him to locate it back up at the top. And that metal home has been there for 30 years before it split. So it's something that just, I did, cause the damage line. So I lost two other well lines. They were there. Just the place open. And I notified the township as soon as it happened. Why are you considering a non-conforming usage? We were told that his current status is non-conforming because the mobile homes are there on one parcel. That came from the township engineer talking um, and, and the way I was instructed to come here tonight that he has non-conformance because right now he has one parcel of property. There's five mobile homes, there used to be nine, there's only five now, there were nine, and his home all on the same parcel. I mean, he has been participating under non-conformance, because otherwise we wouldn't be... If the trailer park is in R4, it's fine. Yeah. He has a single house on R1, which is fine. Why is it non-conforming? Because it's all one parcel. Because we, we were instructed we want to put two residents on one parcel. Yeah, that, would, that would increase the non conforming. Right. right. We're asking for a variance to continue the non conformance. His footprint is still the same. He is, you know, I think there's some kind of law, and that's what I said. We didn't, he didn't bring an attorney with him tonight because we didn't think he did, but there was, um, I had, there was a little insert that. You are allowed to expand non-conformance use by a certain amount every year. So he's not—he's 
he's not really expanding it. He's keeping the same footprint. So this this place is occupied now. People are living there. No. Why do us so? He doesn't have the release of the occupancy permit. It's moved. It's there. But you do want to. You do want to put a second residence on one block, correct? Well, currently the whole, the whole, well, he has six residents, seven residents on one lot. There's still That's five. The we're talking about the R1 property. Right, we're talking about one parcel. So it's still the same parcel. So it's the same parcel of property, and he has a permit for, well, for the storage facility for. It has a functioning septic system. Yeah, he's asking for a variance, either, like you said, an expansion of his non conformance by moving it. It's not really an expansion because it's continuing. It's the same footprint. We took it from the top and we put it on the bottom. Okay, that residence, you put it there. And then the township in July 13th of this year, he sent you a cease and desist because you're building a porch onto it? Well, I, I have a building permit. I well, you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. They issued that on the 13th and the 14th, you came in to get a building permit. Well, well I, I have one. You get a move permit. He thought it was the same permit. He Not thought, yet. because he's doing shingles, he, he had provided pictures of the shingles and the roofing he was going to do and he didn't he hasn't done any of that so before he could put the shingles on the roof he needed to build the porch so he started to build the porch because he needed to put shingles this is a double wide yeah. he plans on making it like a home i mean he has i showed you pictures of the barn and the um, the little tin shed, you keep calling the tin shed, and there's a little um, there's a little chicken coop. I mean, he plans on keeping, he is a veteran to the community as a whole, as a neighbor, when his neighbor, it's not like we do have other um, mobile homes, it was mobile homes across the street from me that had existed, but this is not your standard mobile home. He's, he's converting the mobile home to more of a natural home, so I think there's definitely a betterment from the existing part where it was at the top. I mean, the area at the top is nice. I run up there every morning, I pass up. It's all seated, it's all degraded very nicely. It's all around the grass, down at the bottom. You have pictures, it sits back. How many feet does it sit back from the road? It sits back, it has a nice driveway, it has a shared driveway with the, um, with the barn. I mean, it's and I mean, Mr. O'Malley would be willing to have any kind of stipulation that he wouldn't, you know, if his daughter ever decides to move, that it can be, you know, gotten rid of or something. Or, I mean, he's just looking for her to live in a home. He doesn't want it for rental property. He doesn't want it for anybody else except for his daughter. It's different than the mobile homes at the top. And right? there's a concrete pad or block the pad that you've created for the mobile home and its relocation, correct? Yeah, yeah here, if the picture is looking at, you don't know, I'll assume he's looking at this picture. Yeah, that's what he's looking at. Yeah, the concrete pad, the stone foundation, the stone foundation. He's putting stone all around the bottom. Okay. Because it's across the He's putting stone. You, you, you currently have a home in this one house on this far one block. Do you currently live there? Yes, sir. Okay, are you planning on putting a second home on this property, correct? Just like that. Uh, this is going to be a second home on this property, right? Yes. Uh, you, you're aware that the ordinance is only one primary residence per lot, correct? Well, when one primary residence right. right. Now we are you a way out by getting you to sub the line. That was your way out of getting the second home on that part of one piece of property. And we couldn't do it. Okay. 
Okay, well then you're asking for something that the ordinance right. says you can't have. Well, we're asking for a continuance of his, his non-conformance shoes. He wasn't aware of that there was a difference between our one and our four. He merely took the mobile home that she lived in at the top and put it on the bottom on stable so I can see the use once it moved. Huh? <laughs> the non-conforming in the first place. No. The non-conforming applies to the R4. Yeah, yeah. yeah but well, it's, it's a trailer park. It's its own separate zone. Right. It's its own separate zone. Well, is there something that he has that that's that, created? That, that, well, that's true. Well, up here, it conforms to R4. That's conforming. Right. His house on R1 conforms to the block. What makes it non-conforming? Just that there's a line drawn through it? Well, I guess my, my question is... I mean, would that, that would make it a non-conforming lot, not a use. Non-conforming uses usually occur when the zoning change is done. There's, there's something in that zone that shouldn't be there anymore, but it's there. Right. But he was under the understanding as well as I was under the understanding many conversations because we've had lots of conversations with the township um, staff and engineer and he was he has one parcel of property that it was non-conforming and he's he's a non-conformance because of it being one parcel so i guess this was a little bit different um presentation um, and if you're going to vote i asked if we could um you know have a hearing next month for an attorney because She's right. Uh, we're, he. This is news to me that there's a difference. I mean, our understanding was from uh, all the communications with the township is that he was not conforming, not because it was R1 or R, R4. It was because he currently had ten. Originally, he had ten residential dwellings on one parcel. The landslide occurred. The one. The other ones that went away, he has five now. He's not doing anything with the other one. The one that he bought for his daughter that slid, he wants to make her still home. So, I mean, he was not under the understanding or I that there was a difference between that. I know you, you sent that, but also in my last communication was, hey, this is, no, this is not conforming. And even working with the township engineer, he kept indicating to me our next step would be to appeal to this board for a non-conformance. So I guess he's either appealing to this board for a non-conformance use for his parcel for his daughter's mobile home that slid from, you know, that he moved from the top to the bottom. So if that's not something that this board can consider, then I'd ask for us to postpone this for he could adequately hold an attorney to represent him. I'm happy to speak to that. Um, okay. There is no. I, I, I'm confused. There, there is no non-conforming use. You, you, you are all correct. This is a split parcel, and I will direct you to the sections of your UDO under a split parcel. Each parcel is subject to the zoning provisions of that particular parcel. There is a small R4 section of this parcel. Uh, for which the mobile home park is, is perfectly allowable and there is no problem there. There's no non-conformity. The rest of the parcel is an R1 for which he has the main residence on. Um, this particular mobile home, which I will elicit some testimony about the purposes he told the township as to why he was putting it there, uh, this particular mobile home was recently moved to the R1, originally told uh, to the township that it was for a storage shed, uh, and now he is seeking it for the, to be a residence. That is not allowed, as you're offering. That, that is not allowed. That is two primary residents on one parcel. And it's, it's not nonconformance. It's frankly not even a variance because he has options to address it. He can seek to subdivide and go through that process and deal with any variances within the subdivision process if he seeks some minor deviations. But there is no nonconformity. Uh, and I have some questions that will help better elicit exactly how this came about and what the township was aware of uh, and with the representations that were made to the township about the purpose for this particular building. And the fact that all of this information was conveyed to Mr. Uh, Omatic uh, in, in, in letters from the township's editing officer. And I'd like to maybe just 